Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you my process on how I create this surreal art journal page. Um, I've had a lot of requests on how I create them and they're surprisingly very easy. So I'm going to just kind of walk you through my process and what you will need um, to create one. First, you're going to want to find a picture of like a marble sculpture or like a renaissance like marble sculpture. Think like Greek goddess or something. Um, I found mine on Pinterest. You can certainly look on Pinterest. They have a lot um, that you can print. There's also some on Unsplash. Um, that is a free, all free um, website that generous photographers um, upload their photos to and you can download them and use them. Um, basically, you just want to print out your picture, um, not too big. Obviously, you want it to fit in your art journal. So I printed mine off um, in black and white and um, it makes it easier when I want to add color later. So I think I printed mine like four faces to a page, so they're a little bit bigger than um, a four by six, I think. Um, but print it out and then contour cut it out um, and then save it for later. I'll show you how I attach it in a little bit. Um, I created a background. I wanted a sky looking background, so I used um, some blues and put um, some pink at the bottom, like a vintagey color pink for some flowers that I will add in later. Um, here I am ad adhering my photo um, with some matte medium, and I'm just putting it. Make sure you get it along the edges real well. Um, I also put it on top of my photo um, just to kind of keep the edges down because once you start putting watercolor over it, it'll kind of start to um, roll up and you don't want that. You don't have to put the matte medium over your photo, but I did here. Um, it kind of, if you ever worked with it, most matte mediums you can paint over and it looks like it's the normal paper but this one for some reason it wants to like kind of um, not work well with my watercolor so much it's almost resisting it a little bit but you can still it'll still work um, here I am painting a little bit um, of the D Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White on the moon because um, I want the I'm going to paint it gold later you'll see in the video and I want that gold to kind of stand out um, so I'm painting a little bit of white down first I also used that white to create my clouds um, Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White is really a staple in my art toolbox um, so yeah, I'm just creating a sky here, a sky feel. Um, I'm painting white down first because the gold that I am going to use, and you'll see in a little bit, it if you paint it over a dark color, it turns kind of like an orangey yellow gold, and I don't want it to be like that. I want it to be more of a champagne gold, which is kind of a, a lighter shimmering gold. So I thought maybe if I put white down first, it wouldn't um, turn that uh, yellow orangey color. And then um, I'm going to go in and paint some flowers at the bottom. And my pink is a mix of Daniel Smith's Rose Matter, a little bit of Winsor & Newton Yellow Ochre, and I add in a little bit of gold color and um, some buff titanium also by Daniel Smith, kind of to give it a vintage pink feel. 
And so now I'm just going to go in and make some flowers. Um, and if you ever paid attention to my flowers, they are not like real life flowers. I don't know really how to paint really amazing real life flowers. So I kind of wing it and I like the abstract feel of um, just giving a suggestion that these are flowers. I think it really ties into the surrealness, the surrealism. Um, so I just go in and I make some flowers all around the bottom of her, kind of making it look like she's in a field full of pink flowers. And I add in a little bit of purple moon glow probably um, and a little bit of gold I'm really liking this new um, mixing palette I picked up I think I got it from Blick Art Materials um, I had one a long time ago and it got kind of stained because I used some ink on it so I got a new one and I'm really loving it because I can mix colors um, I, I have been just using like my colors right out of my half pans there and my other palette but I've been wanting to expand my palettes and make colors and I'm really enjoying this um, little palette I have off to the right there it's um, easy to mix different colors. I used to be really concerned about mixing my colors. I didn't like it. I didn't like it when they would touch like two colors if I had in a little um, if I had in a little area that would touch it would like bother me. But now I'm getting like used to it and finding that it adds a lot of like dimension, I guess. I can. I can discover new colors when these colors touch. <laughs> I'm kind of the same way about my food. I don't like when certain things on my plate touch. I like each individual food to have its own flavor and not mix. <laughs> okay, I'm getting off on a tangent. But anyway, I'm still painting flowers here and just adding in a little bit of purple it looks like. Or I think that's moon glow. But I came up with this really great purple color that is moon glow and a little bit of um, a cool gray color and some white. And it kind of made like a smoky lavender color that I was really loving. So I put some of that in my little field of flowers there. And again, I'm just loosely painting like leaves and flowers and nothing too technical that's what makes this fun like if I focus on making things look exactly the way I think they should then I get really frustrated and it doesn't work out but I'm just laying down some leaves and flowers in no particular order no particular flower just like I said, giving it sort of the suggestion that it is a flower. And then adding in some leaves there. Kind of makes it look like she's in a field of flowers. Oh my goodness. This coronavirus thing is like so crazy. I have been stuck inside my house with my children who are home from school for like a month now and it is really difficult to maintain the sanity between having to homeschool with them every week and trying to maintain my own freelance projects and I cannot believe how many times a day we do dishes. I mean, the dishes just pile up in the sink like every single day. 
And I'm like, oh my God, every day, unload, load the dishwasher, unload, load the dishwasher. It's crazy. But I am thankful that my family and I are remaining healthy and I hope all of you are as well. I know the social distancing thing can be really hard, especially those people who are used to being social and around people a lot. For me, it's not really much of a change because I've um, been home for a while now, um, primarily doing freelance and working on projects at home. So it's not much of a change for me. Um, it's just going to the grocery store and making uh, you know necessary trips to pick up food is a little bit nerve-wracking but I'm thankful that my husband does most of that for me because even before the coronavirus going to the grocery store would give me a panic attack I mean I just can't handle it sometimes so luckily he does that for me anyway now I'm putting in some detail here with the gold jelly roll pen that I often use and I made a circle right in the middle of her forehead kind of representing like you know that intuition and the third eye and um, you know really thinking with the mind um, I, I like that symbolism so I put a circle in the middle of her head and then drew out like a starburst I think that really gives it um, like a surreal vibe. And I'm adding in some planets and I did paint my moon gold. And I think using the white underneath really helped it stand out a little bit more. Um, so it shines, the gold like really pops, it shines really nicely without that yellow orange undertone. And then I'm just adding in some little stars, the details, um, and of course, I cannot forget Saturn. So you could really go crazy with the details. Sometimes I have to reel myself back in, but um, I really like this pop of gold on here kind of almost gives it a vintage feel. And then I'm using, so I get a lot of questions about like all my materials that I use and I should probably just do like an entire video on all of my materials and swatch out my um, paint palette so everybody can see the colors that I use and maybe how to mix colors. Let me know if you think that's a good idea down below. Um, anyway, I'm using a white Uniball Signo pen, and it's a broad tip, so it's a little bit, um, the ink comes out a little bit thicker, but it's really, I like the coverage. So I'm writing in a quote on my journal page like I often do, and using that pen. Um, the other white pen that I use is a smaller um, Uniball, and it's a little bit more um, transparent when you put it down. Like it's only, it's got like a ghosting effect almost. When I put it down, I can't always see it until a little bit after it dries, and then it's like dries white. But it's a thinner tip, so I like to make stars with that one more. Yeah, I had to go back over my writing there because it got kind of gummed up. My pen did, so I had to go back over my letters so you could see them. I'm just adding some stars in or some splats that represent stars. And yeah, that's it. It's really simple. I will leave links down below with all of the materials I used in this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.